Well, today is Friday, and uh, I just woke up. The next Minnesota rehearsal is scheduled for this Sunday, and it's going to be me and my sister Chelsea and Kara and Satoshi and Nathaniel. However, uh, today I just woke up to a blizzard warning. So hopefully this doesn't change my plans, but it may, so we never know. But it also may provide some pretty cool footage uh, if there is a blizzard. And uh, I don't really have very good boots. The boots I have are jungle boots, which are kind of made for hot weather. But if I have to, that's all I'm going to have. So anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up and uh, share that little bit of info. I looked outside. There's nothing out there right now. So it hasn't even started snowing yet. So I need coffee and uh, talk to you later. Last summer I recorded some songs all by myself, then started a Kickstarter campaign to release the songs on 180 gram vinyl. Much to my surprise, the Kickstarter campaign completed successfully. The album is being pressed and is set to be completed in April of 2016. Now is when the real challenge begins. How does a largely unknown artist sell 500 vinyl LPs in 2016? Good question. I'm a 40 year old guy who's played in bands since I was 10. So the idea of putting together a band to play unrewarding shows at bars for no money to try to sell an album really didn't sound like fun, nor like a good idea. So instead, I've decided to get some musicians together to perform on YouTube. I'll help promote the album, and it'll be a lot of fun in the process. The Minnesota Project documents this and is a window into the life of a musician who never gives up. Well, it's Saturday, the day before the next Minnesota rehearsal, and that's what it looks like outside. Now I gotta go to work and climb through this stuff. Yep, it definitely snowed a lot. definitely hit. It's really, really coming down. I just uh, got out of work early, so I'm going to head home. I uh, just want to get some of this on video before I go, because it's pretty cool. It's actually quite beautiful. Chelsea in the snow. Okay, what I have in my lap right here is actually something I wanted to do for a little while on these videos, and I just kept forgetting. I don't know why it's taken me to the fifth one to do this, but what this is is actually the test pressing for Minnesota, uh, the LP. And uh, actually, I got these a little while ago already. Um, so, I was just going to show you one of these and put one on my record player. So yeah, here we go from Rainbow Records, and you can see my name there, and the date and all that, and uh, it's really, I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand, so it's kind of difficult to do this, but uh, even the test pressing is really thick, like 180 gram vinyl, uh, it doesn't bend or anything, but it's really nice, it sounds really great, so 
Let me go ahead and put this on my uh, turntable and let you guys see it. Ancient uh, Glenburn turntable. Uh, I actually picked this up from a, a record store here in Park Slope uh, called Fifth Avenue Records and Tapes. And when I got it, the stylus, or actually the whole uh, cartridge, needed to be replaced. And what I did, and I regret not making a video of this because it was actually pretty cool, uh, if I do say so. Um, what I had to do is I actually <clears throat> basically modified the whole uh, head here of the turntable to take a modern uh, cartridge because the cartridge on this thing was like impossible to find. And then I also created a counterbalance here out of a bolt and some washers, as, as you can see, because once I changed the cartridge, this uh, new front cartridge is like way heavier than the one that used to be on there. And it just would have destroyed records if I tried to listen to it that way. So I had to figure out some way to balance that out. This particular model of turntable, it's a record changer. So like, you know, you could put a stack of records up here and it would change them and like just drop them as you got to the end of side A, it would drop another one on the stack. And so the weird thing that they did with these turntables, these were actually made by BSR and the BSRs were like this as well, where they would actually make them play a tiny, tiny bit too fast if there's one record on them. And their thinking was, so by the time you had like five or six records piled on there, that the middle one would be playing the normal speed and then the last one that was on there would be playing like slightly slow uh, because you know that was their way to get around like it slowing down every time a record would another record would fall on the platter. Uh, they just decided to make it play like a tiny, tiny bit too fast. It's actually 3% too fast. I figured that out by using Audacity and, uh, you know, like ripping some albums and then changing the percentage of the speed and comparing it to CD recordings and all of that. So it plays 3% too fast. So let's get back to the original uh, point of this video, which was to play the Manasota test pressing. So let me put it on here. And you, I don't want to scratch the test pressing. Put this thing like that. And then you have to do this. And that actually starts a turntable. The automatic feature of it doesn't work perfect or at all. Actually, it just did. That's really weird. I've never seen it work before. But it went to the middle of the record. Hmm. Let me see something. Maybe it'll work now. Well, I'll be... Try that again. I have this set on the right thing. Yeah, see now it's not. No, that's what it normally would do, but that was really strange. Anyway. I might have to pause this and get it to work, then come back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So here we go, I got it working. But it, the automatic feature still doesn't work but you can still hear it. So let me lower the needle. Oops. It's kind of hard to do with one hand on a camera and one hand on the turntable. You might actually recognize this song from the opening of the video series. This is what I used in the background. But there you have it. That's pretty much what it's going to sound like on vinyl, except for it'll be 3% slower. <laughs> Not that you can really even notice. So yeah, don't forget, you can always pre-order the album right now. Uh, there's a link if you go on the cards and YouTube, there's a link there. Or you can just go to anthillrecordings.com and the pre-order link's right there on the main page. Well, it's Sunday morning, and uh, it looks like we did get quite a bit of snow, but 
Um, I think all the trains are still running, so are running again. So uh, rehearsal tonight is actually on uh, with uh, me and my sister Chelsea and Kara and Satoshi and Nathaniel. Okay, well I made it to Bushwick from work. Uh, despite the uh, massive mountains of snow, the subway was running okay. It was just a little bit slow, but I made it here, so I just got off the subway and I'm gonna walk to the studio and uh, wait for the others to start showing up. But I just got here in the building and uh, yeah, I'm not sure how this much snow actually got inside. <laughs> Sometimes he can use a theater. Oh, really? Yeah, it'd be better if we could rent a theater. I know. Really. Wow. Yeah. Where? I can ask if we were, could record after hours at City Winery. Oh, really? Possibly. We could okay. give them money. I'll ask. They might just yeah, I'll, let us I'll, I'll do it. To, uh, okay. a friend. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I mean, that definitely would be cooler. You know, it definitely have like a lot more. Like, They're a little weird about their audio stuff, but if we bring our, like, I'd bring all my own yeah, stuff. So yeah, so they might just let us use it. Okay. Sure. 